Hello everyone, welcome back. We are continuing with Hauntober and we are going to be doing another installment from the Others series by Christine Warren. This one is Big Bad Wolf. It's the second book. It's the direct sequel to Regina and Dimitri's story. Um, the picture that I have on my Kindle isn't a really great cover art for the book. It doesn't match up with what it says the cover art is going to be. Um, when you when you purchase it on Amazon. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't have a physical copy at Half Price Books when I went and I had gotten the other two. But as per usual, I will be putting a picture of the cover art in the thumbnail so you'll be able to see it there. So going on with the review, there aren't really a whole lot of trigger warnings. There is, um, again, there is an assault in the form of like a mugging. Um, and that's really about it for the most part. Um, so, moving on, this is the story of Melissa Jane Roper, also known as Missy, and Graham Winters, who is, in fact, a lycanthrope or a werewolf. So, we start off at Regina and Dimitri's post-wedding engagement party. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, they ended up getting married, like, a few weeks after a meeting, and so because of the whirlwind wedding, they ended up having an engagement party after the fact for anybody who was unable to be there for the actual wedding itself. So Melissa is there, but she is hiding from her friends because guess what? It's her turn for a fantasy fix. For those of you who didn't see the last review, a fantasy fix is kind of like a blind date. However, instead of it being for the purpose of getting to know someone for a possible relationship, it's, it's set up to have a sexual fantasy fulfilled uh, discreetly by a man who has been vetted by your friends, so to speak. Um, if you want to see more details on that, then go watch my review for One Bite with a Stranger. Um, so she's hiding from her friends. She doesn't want to do it. She does, She's never wanted to do any of them before. And they know she didn't want to do it, so that's why they decided to have her meet her fantasy fix at the engagement party, because she had to be there, being that she was the maid of honor. And also at the party is Graham Winters, who, as I've previously stated, is a lycanthrope werewolf and a man that Missy has developed a very big crush on. Um, but he kind of doesn't have any idea of who she is, both metaphorically and literally. He can't see her really at all. Um, so she's hiding from her friends, and when she decides to make a break for it, Graham has happened to notice her at this point and kind of decides to hit on her. He's decided he wants to sleep with her that night. So he goes to make a move on her and at first she brushes him off, but then when she realizes that A, he doesn't know who she is and B, he could be useful in getting her out of this party without any interference from her friends, she figures, okay, I'll let him take me out of the party and then after the fact I'll tell him who I am. He'll be so disgusted that he's talking to a human that he'll just, you know, kind of go away. That doesn't happen, and they end up hooking up. And so she kind of evolves her thinking, going with the thought process of, well, it's not going to last, but at least I can have a really great memory for when I'm older to kind of hold on and cling to at night. Well, after they've hooked up, understandably, they fall asleep. Somewhere around two or three in the morning, Graham wakes up, looks down at who is in his bed with him, and realizes, holy crap, this is, this is Missy. This is Regina's best friend. And then he also realizes that Missy's best friend, or Missy is uh, his mate, the woman he is destined to be with. And of course, being a lycanthrope like werewolf, he is completely ecstatic to be meeting or finding his, his mate. However, because she is human, he knows that she's probably not prepared for the idea of being a mate. She has no idea what it means. She has no idea that what any of it means, essentially. She knows what he is, but she doesn't understand what it entails. So... He has to figure out how to get her on board with it without freaking her out. Um, 
while this is all going on, you find out that Graham's cousin, uh, Curtis, has been trying to undermine his authority as the alpha of the pack to the point where he calls a howl, which is kind of like a pack meeting um, that is held at the full moon, I believe. Um, and because technically he wants to become alpha, but in order to do that the correct way, he is supposed to challenge every male in the pack that outranks him, which is like half of them because he's a mid-level pack member and he doesn't have the physical strength to do so. So he is taking a little bit more of a sneaky route and trying to undermine Graham so he can get it by default. So he goes so far as to have someone assault Missy in uh, what would appear to be something of a mugging, trying to kind of um, scare her off and get to Graham that way. Um, Missy ends up having to find her own position within the pack because as the mate of the alpha male, that makes her the Luna or alpha female. But she is not actually Lupine, um, which is the breed of lycanthrope werewolf that they are. And uh, so that makes for a very interesting power dynamic when she is beginning to be introduced to the other women of the pack. Um, she does have a very quick ally in the form of Sam, who is the second in command of the uh, female side, so she would be uh, Missy's second in command as Alpha, much like Logan is um, Graham's second in, com in command as Alpha on the male side. So there's really interesting power dynamics, really interesting hierarchical um, positions that you see referenced in the story. There's definitely more character development than there was in the last book. You definitely feel Melissa's insecurity. You feel her lack of self-confidence and her confusion that mate, that Graham seems to think that she is his mate. She doesn't, she's like, I can't be your mate. I'm not Lupine. And Graham's trying to get through to her that, yeah, you are my mate. Um, she does start to kind of come into her own a little bit. She's always been a very shy, meek person, but you start to see that she has something of a spine of steel that she didn't realize she had, which is kind of fun. Uh, and definitely a really, really great development, especially after Regina from the last book. Um, Graham, once again, is trying to convince Missy that she is his mate, trying to get her to understand what that means. Because for him, as a lycanthrope, lupine werewolf, whatever you want to call him, this is totally natural to him. That's how it always happens for a lupine, is you have your fun until you find your mate, and then you settle down, and that's just how it is. Um, he always looked forward to finding his mate. He always looked forward to having children or cubs with his mate. He didn't anticipate that his mate would be human, so he really never took the time to figure out how to communicate with a human on a human level. So he's trying to be patient while at the same time getting extremely frustrated and not understanding how she's not getting it. Um, the one thing I didn't really like about Graham, because I like the fact that he's a very gruff, burly, like, type alpha male character. The one thing I didn't like about him, though, was at one point they're um, having a steamy, steamy scene and he knows that Missy is fertile because as a lichen, he has heightened senses and he can smell the changes in hormone. And he chooses to have sex with her anyway, intentionally getting her pregnant and then uses that pregnancy as a power play against his cousin. It's not why he wants to be with her. Again, it's, it is instinct for them, but that's kind of what happened. Not a great moment, but uh, I'm running out of time. I have like 20 seconds left, so it's a, I enjoyed the book. It's my favorite. It's not the most well done out of the series, but it is my favorite so far. And I give this one a three and a half out of five stars. So you have a great day. I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.